Cryptography Fundamentals 5, GCD, Extended GCD and Group Generators. This podcast will outline a few building blocks of cryptography. GCD, Greatest Common Divisor, Extended GCD and Group Generators. These you will find in many cryptography related papers and any weaknesses in these will cause significant security problems in the implementation. Greatest Common Divisor GCD, a fairly simple concept that is used within public key encryption is the greatest common divisor. With this, we take two integer values and determine the largest factor that they share. Overall, every non-prime number is made up of the multiplication of prime numbers. For example, 32,128 is 2 times 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 251. And 36,281 is 7 times 73 times 71. So the GCD of 56 and 42 is 14, as both of these values can be factorised into 2 times 14 times 3 and 3 times 14 respectively. I've given a link on the related web page. Normally we use this function to find values which do not share a factor, as we will see when we are selecting the public exponent E in the RSA method. So we look for GCD of A and B equal to 1. The method to determine GCD is fairly simple, and where we can take two values A and B and then use the modulus operation to find the GCD. I've given the code on the related web page. A sample run of this shows that 679 and 99 do not share any factors. So the GCD of 679 and 99 is equal to 1. Extended GCD. As we saw, GCD is the greatest common divisor. For two integers x and y, the extended GCD method solves ax plus by is equal to v, and where v is equal to gcd of x and y. One example of the using the extended gcd method is to determine the modulo inverse of a value, or the inverse value of n mod n mod p, so that n times n to the minus 1 is equal to 1 mod p. I've given a few examples in the related web page, but 30 times A plus 20 times B is equal to GCD 20, 30, 20. The solution to this is A equal to 1, B equal to minus 1. Group generators. In reading about cryptography, have you ever come across the term of a cyclic group, big G, of order P and with a generator G. For example, for a discrete log mapping, we might map X to Y with Y is equal to G to the power of X mod P, and where we have a generator value, little g, and a prime number P. The challenge is that even though we know G, Y, and P, it is extremely difficult to determine the X value if we use a large prime number. But can we use any value of G, and should it be as large as possible? The answer to both of these questions is no. If we select a prime number of 11, and then select G values of 2, 3, 4, up to 10, then we can calculate a table. And I've given that table in the related web page. If if we look at g equals 2 and p equals to 11, for 2 to the power of 1 mod 11 we get 2. For 2 to the power of 2 mod 11 we get 4. 2 to the power of 3 mod 11 gives 8. And so on. And as we can see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 maps to 2, 4, 8, 5, 10, 9, 7, 3, 6, 1. And where all of the input values map to one and map, give a 1 to 1 mapping to another value in the group. But if we try g equal to 3 and p equal to 11, then we get for x equals to 1, 3 
and for x equal to 6, we also get 3. The mapping is now 1 to 10, gives 3, 9, 5, 4, 1, 3, 9, 5, 4, 1. And so we are not using the full range and where there would be confusion in mapping back to the original value. But in order to demonstrate the principle, I've done this in a long-handed way. So how could we find the possible values of little g for a given prime number p? Well, I've given a, a Python program to achieve this and to see if the value of g that we select for a prime number is safe. A sample run for g equal to 3 and a prime number of 13 gives false because the output becomes 1, 3, 9, 1, 3, 9, 1, 3, 9, and so on. For a safe value, g equal to 3 and p equal to 17, we get a value output starting from 0 as an input of 1, 3, 9, 10, 13, 5, 15, 11, and so on. But how does this work in practice? Well, rather than picking the prime number and then finding a g value which will work, we typically pick the g value that we want, such as for g equal to 2, g equal to 3, or g equal to 5, and then find a prime number of a given size that will work with that, prime, that value. This will slow down the process, of course, as we might have to pick a few prime numbers before we find one that works. An example command in OpenSSL to generate the Vehelman parameters for g equal to 3 and a 512-bit prime number is OpenSSL dhparam minus 3 5112. This gives us a g value of course of 3 and will give us a 512-bit prime number which is safe. Okay, thank you.